Hi everyone, in this one we're going to do a quick run through of how to determine our resultant using the parallelogram method. As you can see on screen, I'm showing a ruler and a protractor, which means we are doing this the manual way. So let's get right into it. So here's a question. A rowboat R gets lost at sea and is towed to shore by two fishing vessels A and B as shown below. If B pulls with a force of 24 newtons, a pulls with a force of 21 newtons and the angle between them is 30 degrees. Calculate the vector sum of their force and hence state the direction R moves and the magnitude of the force it is pulled with. So this question basically wants us to find the resultant, which you're seeing here, sum. Remember, resultant is the sum of two or more vectors. And the direction, they're basically asking you to give the angle at which the resultant is acting and the magnitude basically you'll be doing some measurement to give the magnitude so let's look at a diagram that is representing the question so you have rowboat r and then tow boats a and b pulling this boat to shore now remember once vectors are acting at an angle to each other then the parallelogram method can be used to get your resultant so now let's look at the steps. So step one, we are going to be drawing a vector diagram to scale, which means we're going to be using the correct length and angle to represent the vectors given. So we're going to arrange the vectors tail to tail for the parallelogram method. And in this example that we got, vector A is 21 newtons, vector B is 24 newtons. So first off, we need to find a factor that is common to both A, which is 21, and B, which is 24. So, looking at the factors, we have one that's common to both. Then we have three that's common to both. And I think I want to work with a scale of one, two, three. So, what this scale means is for every centimeter that I draw, I'm representing three newtons. So, I'm going to be having now my ruler. So if I start from zero, move to one, I would have represented three newtons. Moving to two, I would have represented six newtons. So you could keep adding three newtons for every centimeter that we move, or you could just do simple multiplication. So now we're going to be drawing vector B on the horizontal. Now, if vector B is 24 newtons and we need to represent it, how long should the line we draw be to represent 24 newtons? If you said 8 centimeters, you would have been perfectly correct. So let's do a quick check. We can say 3 eighths, 24. Or if you want to manually check, you could say, okay, starting from 0, this is 3, 3 plus 3, 6, plus 3, 9, plus 3, 12, plus 3, 15, plus 3, 18, plus 3, 21 and then three more gives me 24. So that would be the length of the line that I'm using to mark B. Then I need to now draw the angle. I need to consider the angle between them and so I'm going to be bringing in my protractor and I'm going to be using this now to measure 30 degrees. So 30 degrees is along here and note that this horizontal, this horizontal portion of my protractor is set on my horizontal line. So that this line now represents my zero and then I go up to my 30. So I'm gonna mark my 30, which is right here, and then I'm gonna use my ruler now to draw through my line. Now, at a scale of one centimeter to three newtons, how long would my line need to be for me to represent 21 newtons. So let's check. From zero, three plus three, six plus three, nine plus three, 12 plus three, 15 plus three, 18 plus three, 21. So for me to get a line that represents 21 newtons at a scale of one to three newtons, I would have to draw it at seven centimeters. So now I have A and B represented. Let's now go to step two. 
Step two says at the open end of the horizontal vector, that would be this one, we are going to be drawing a broken line parallel to vector A. And once it's parallel, it's the same angle. But we also need to ensure that it's the same length because if you remember anything about parallelograms, it has opposite sides that are equal. Equal in angle and equal in length. So let's do that now. So bring a protractor. I'm going to measure my angle. And there I drew my line at 30 degrees. Step three. I am now going to be drawing a line parallel to B. And again, it should be the same length, same angle. And this will complete my parallelogram. Now we can move on to step four. We're going to be drawing in the diagonal. So once we're dealing with the resultant, our arrows should be going in the same general direction as our two vectors. And so the diagonal that we now have represents our resultant. Very good. So now we have used a scale diagram to get our resultant, but we're not quite done. We were asked to find the magnitude and direction of the resultant. So our next step is to measure the length and then we're going to be converting it according to scale. And of course, that will give us the magnitude. So let's take our ruler now and measure the length of the resultant. From what we see here, our resultant, remember you have to start measuring from zero. Our resultant is approximately 14.5 centimeters. Now with that length, it's 14.5 centimeters. However, that's not the magnitude because guess what? Our vectors were in newtons. So our resultant also has to be in newtons. So what we would do is to convert it according to scale. Remember, we said every centimeter that we have on this drawing represents three newtons. So if we have 14.5 centimeters to convert it to scale, we would simply multiply it by three. And we got our scale there, 43.5. So that's now the magnitude of our resultant. So now we're going to be measuring the angle. So I'm going to bring in my protractor. And from what we can see, it appears to be just about 14.5 degrees. And if we bring it in a little closer, we'll be able to better see that it's about 14.5 degrees and so we will be recording that as the direction of the resultant and that's as you can see to the positive x-axis so no it is not to be converted to scale we draw angles as is we do not scale angles what we scale are the lengths that represent the magnitude but our angles are always drawn as is so this measured angle is the direction of the resultant. And there you have it. With that, we have completed the parallelogram method. Hope you got it and hope you're now able to go and do this method on your own. If you think you have not quite caught it, don't be afraid to just rewind the video and go again. Thanks for joining. See you in the next one.